something I'm going to show you here. Um, anyone that has one of these pole saws, okay, this is part of a five and one in SGS. Um, if you use it regularly, what I have found and what I've uh, realized has become quite common with people that use these is the little guard, for the want of a better word, has a tendency to, to flip around and catch when the, uh, the chain comes loose or throws. And just when you're getting into using it, you're continuously stopping and having to put it back on again. And before you know it, you're getting fed up doing it and you end up just putting it back into the shed and think what a waste of time i use my pole saw quite a bit <clears throat> for trimming back high branches or just for the length of reach for going in and cutting gorse along fence lines um and that sort of thing so the use of a normal chainsaw wouldn't really be you know applicable there going into the gorse to cut it where you have the, the standoff length of the pole saw itself my five and one is an SGS. Okay, so SGS is obviously blue, but this is a spurious part that I bought aftermarket because the blue one kept coming loose, working loose, kept hitting the chain. Obviously, over time, it's broken. Off it came. I had the same issue with this one. I only had it a couple of days and I started doing it, and you get pretty fed up. Um, and obviously, you can't use it without it. So, obviously, necessity is the mother of invention. So what I done was, I was in the shed here one evening and I was just wrecking my head as to why the damn thing kept co coming off. Now some people are going to say, oh well if you just tighten up the screw it'll hold it in place and so on. But I use this quite a lot. That's fine if you're trimming little small branches and you're only doing a handful or you're, you're not really, you know, I don't want to say abusing it, but you're not really getting your money's worth out of it. Um, so what I decided was, you know what can I do to it to stop it coming off? You know because it, it's spending more time fixing the damn thing than I am actually using it. So what I came up was, well, what if I put another washer in here? You know, and tighten it down. Is is it going to give it that bit more pressure to hold it in place, or what? Um, so I tried that, and yeah, it worked for a little while. But the same thing happened that it catch and work loose and throw up like this and snag up, and I was back to square one again. So I thought, well, what if I made up some sort of a bracket that sat into this and attached to a secondary point on the frame and it would, first of all, hold the bar in place that it wouldn't come loose and throw it and also that it wouldn't damage the cover if it did. So what I came up with was this nice, nice piece of aluminium. And what this is actually off is a window bracket for when they're putting in UB, UPVC windows into into buildings okay so it's a obviously it's flat it's straight it's a bit longer and there's like a i don't really know what way to describe on the end of it if you google them i'm sure you'll see pictures of them so i almost cut off the end to a length that i required kind of just laid it flat marked it roughly where um you know the bend and the angle needed to be and uh just eyed up where i could get away with attaching it to on the cast frame itself so once i had this bit here and i seen that i had a bit of clearance at the bottom i just got a drill bit and gently worked the drill bit the whole way through here at the back so you see it doesn't actually come near the oil uh the oil housing at all now what size was the drill bit i honestly can't remember because obviously it was probably 10 11 o'clock at night but it is big enough to hold a self-tapping screw. Okay, so I was once I had the angle put in, had plenty of standoff in this to put down through it. Put in a little bit of a spacer, a little bit of hollow tube to stop obviously as this is tightening down, that is pulling down on the plastic housing. So it can only go so far. So that sits in there. Screw goes down, threads through, holds it in place. Then another washer here, and then the little a little knock nut on top to stop it working free. And since I've done this, not one single time has the bar or the chain come off or the housing spun. And it's, it's such a simple idea that I'm kicking myself that I didn't come up with it sooner. So just a simple piece of aluminium, some lightweight steel. Doesn't need to be anything mega heavy. You're not getting uh, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. 
But once you have that done, I promise you, it'll save you so much bloody downtime for such a simple idea. So what I'll do is I'm going to put it back together here now and uh, you'll see what it's like when I have it reassembled. Now, people will say, well, if you have the bar tension or the chain tension properly and this tightened properly and so on and so on. This thing is, oh, I bought it in 2013. So, seven, eight years. So, it's seen a fair share of work. So, something as simple as this will keep you in operation rather than spending more bloody downtime fixing shit. So... And get the job done sooner. Right, so I'm going to get this reassembled. You'll see what it look like, looks like when it's uh, finished. So everything's reassembled again. Brackets in place. Lock nuts tightened down. Self tappers in. Spacers in. Now, I'm going to put it back together. The orange housing sits just on top of the spacer. Okay, it doesn't cover over the hole. It just sits in about 2 mil over. Um, and then as this tightens down, it's just gently squeezed into place not mad tight just enough to hold it securely in place and that's it so and i don't wonder why the bars upside down just to prevent uneven wear and some people out there are going to say oh man don't do that jesus if the pole saw company wanted that done they'd have done it that's a fucking safety hazard but well, guess what okay if you think it's a safety hazard, then don't do it all right don't do it but if you want to spend time getting a job done with as little downtime as possible, I'm sure you're going to look for stuff that's going to enable you to get that done as quick as possible and as efficiently as possible. And like I said, I don't see how this is a safety issue, okay? The chain isn't going to wrap up around the screw. The cover isn't going to come loose. And since I've done this, not once has that chain thrown or the, the, the housing spun around and, you know, you're only getting going and then you're having to stop and fix it and then go again. And before you know it, you're fed up bloody doing it. So there you go, nice, quick, simple trick to help anyone with a pole saw get the job done quicker with as little downtime as possible. Now I know I haven't been putting out any hunting content as of late, okay, and that's just due solely to work. Um, work is a bit crazy at the minute, I'm off at the minute with COVID, you can probably hear I'm dosed up. So while I'm home uh, and I have time on my hands, I'm just trying to get as much work done around the house as possible. Um, hopefully I'll have a video up in the next week or two of a bit of rabbit snaring i'm doing around my own property and um, since i've put oak trees up the back and all the other trees that i, I was on about planting um, i have managed to shoot a few rabbits over the last couple of nights for the 22 and silencer um obviously i didn't record them but hopefully uh the snares i've put down will have a couple of catches in them over the next few days i can compile some sort of a video and get it up so to all those subscribers who have hung about looking for that type of content please hold fast um and to everyone else i apologize i haven't had uh, any mink trapping videos up for a long time i just have a lot going on personal wise um uh maybe sometime i'll elaborate on it but not just at the minute so there you are a little quick tip for you for your pole saw okay hopefully that will help some people out